In this edition of Back in History, we bring to you the story of the life and times of Ladi Kwali, Nigeria's foremost porter, ceramicist, and art instructor, whose beautiful works are still available in many places in Nigeria and around the world till today, several years after her demise in 1984. Ladi was a woman of distinction. She was a Nigerian citizen of the northern extraction of the country. She was blessed with gifted hands and became famous for her ability to uniquely transform clay to beautiful vessels of pottery, ceramics, and the likes. She was patronized by royalties, government institutions, universities, and several individuals at home and abroad. Welcome to this edition of Back in History. Ladi Kwali was born in 1925. She was born in present-day Abuja, which is the federal capital territory of Nigeria. She was of the Bagi tribe. The Bagis are the predominant ethnic group in Abuja. Like many people that are born to meet their parents and relatives engage in one trade or the other, Ladi Kwali was born into the family of porters. At the time of her birth, pottery was the major occupation of people in her area, especially women. So children grew up following their parents to farmlands where clay was being excavated and taken home and used in the making of pots and related ornaments. In those days, plastic containers were not available in the country and pottery was seen as a lucrative trade as it provided vessels for storage of water, storage of oil, storage of local drinks, food and many more. Cooking of food was also done with the use of pots made of clay. It was a well-cherished trade at the time and still became cherished into the early 80s and 90s in several parts of Nigeria and other countries in Africa. But it should be noted that not everyone was able to manipulate clay and transform it into pots and related vessels. Pottery was an art mastered by few people. Such people were seen as persons that were naturally gifted or talented. Ladi Kwali was one of such uniquely gifted women in the northern region of Nigeria. History has it that the person who deliberately taught Ladi Kwali the art of poetry was her auntie, who was a well-known potter. Ladi followed her to the farmland to extract clay, conveyed the clay to the house, and watched her transform the clay into pots and other household commodities. The auntie then showed her the skills of pot making, and in no time, Ladi picked up remarkably and started making her own pots. She made pots that were much sought after by the locals and her designs were distinctive. While others simply made pots, Ladi Kwali made pots with drawings. She drew images such as fishes, crocodiles, traditional festivals, faces of prominent people, bicycles, and many other beautiful items used by the locals at the time. She also added other aspects of sculpture, such as the making of works hung on the walls for beautification of dwelling houses and public places. Emeas began to patronize her. Local authorities also patronized her. Individuals also patronized her. Universities also patronized her works. Some persons even engaged her 
to design the walls of their homes with sculpture. Ladi became a household name and was in fact struggling to meet demands from customers. A lot of her ways were sold out even before they were taken to the markets. During Ladi's time, Nigeria was colonized by the British and there were several British nationals working in present-day Nigeria as civil servants for the British or as consultants to them. One of such persons was the man named Michael Cardew. Michael was the portrait officer in the Colonial Department of Commerce and Industry. Michael came in contact with Ladi's work in Abuja in 1951 and was so impressed by it. He quickly recognized the talent in Ladi and made arrangements to give a touch of formal training to the already deposited natural talents in Ladi. Michael Cardew made quick consultations with the colonial office and obtained approval to establish a poultry training center in Suleja in April 1952. He brought Ladi into the center as the first female porter of the institution. There and then, Ladi was introduced to wheel throwing, glassing, production of sagas, and the use of slips and other contemporary pottery and ceramic making techniques. In a very short period, Ladi picked up remarkably and introduced the modern techniques to her poetry work. She started making pots with graffito decorations. She made pots with drawings on them. In this sense, her cultural background, the Bagi tribe, influenced her drawings on the pots. She also began to write traditional idioms and expressions or wise sayings on her work. Her works appealed directly to her immediate people and to the people outside her locality. Ladi was later appointed as an instructor at the Portrait Academy. Having learned a lot and having demonstrated her learning in a lot of works practically carried out by her, her role as instructor included mainly the training of students on the fine arts of poetry and general sculpture. It is reported that Ladi Kuali did not have the privilege to attend Western education. There is no record of Ladia attending primary school or secondary schools or university education. This was not unusual in her time. What would go for the highest formal education to be attended by Ladi was her stay at the Poetry Training Center in Suleja. But Ladi has an incredible story. Despite the fact that she did not have the privilege of passing through the four walls of primary, secondary, and university education, Ladi was at various times appointed as resource person on poetry and sculpture to several institutions of learning. She was, for instance, a resource person to Amadou Bello University, Zaria. She was invited on several occasions to give lecture on her work at Amadou Bello University. She was also consulted by several institutions in Europe and America. Her works featured in international exhibitions and in 1961, she did a live demonstration at the Royal College Farnham in Great Britain. In 1972, she toured America with Michael Cardew and her works received wide acclaim from a cross spectrum of people. Ladi received several awards in appreciation of her outstanding works of art. In 1977, Amadou Bello University awarded her an honorary doctorate degree in poetry. In 1980, the Nigerian government awarded her the Nigerian National Order of Merit. It is important to mention that this award is usually given to persons who have contributed immensely 
to education in Nigeria. Ladi had indeed contributed immensely to the training and education of several people in the fine art of poetry, ceramics, and general sculpture, and was thus considered worthy for the National Merit Award. For the federal government of Nigeria, the fact that she did not attend formal education as professors would do did not matter in the consideration of Ladi Kuali for the National Merit Award, and the federal government was highly applauded for giving recognition to raw talent like that possessed by Ladi Kuali. In 1981, she was bestowed with another award by the federal government of Nigeria, the award of Officer of the Niger, OON. She also received the award of Member of the Order of the British Empire, OBE, and the Silver Award for Excellence from Washington. Her works greatly influenced the perception of Nigeria to tourists and the likes by introducing the allure of Nigeria to the international community through her carefully embellished earthwear techniques. Ladi Kuali's work was widely displayed in London during Nigeria's independence celebration in October 1960. Her work was also exhibited at the Berkeley Gallery in London. Her works are, till this day, found in institutions like Smithsonian National Museum of African Art, United States of America, Victoria and Albert Museum, and Aberystwyth University Ceramic Gallery, United Kingdom, and many other institutions of repute. Ladi Kuali is the woman on the 20 Naira note, which is a legal tender in Nigeria till today. She has a street named after her in Abuja and Niger State in further immortalization of her name. There is also a hall in Sheraton Hotel and Suite in Abuja named after her, the Ladi Kuali Hall. Interestingly too, the Abuja Poetry Training Center was renamed now known as the Ladi Kuali Poetry Center. Ladi died in Mena, Niger State on 12 August 1984 from, quote, natural causes. She was buried there in Niger. There is a sculpture of her in the Federal Secretary of Abuja till this day. Ladi is still being celebrated even at the global stage several years after her demise. On 16th May 2022, for instance, Ladi Kuali's photograph was used by Google as their doodle for the day. Indeed, Ladi Kuali lives on in the minds of many people across the length and breadth of Nigeria and across the world at large. Ladi Kuali was indeed a woman of distinction. She came, she saw, and was able to conquer the world of poetry, ceramics, and sculpture in general. She also set the tone and raised the bar on the power of the woman to change society for the good of all. Her name will continue to resonate across Nigeria, Africa, and the world at large for many years to come. Many thanks for watching this episode of Back in History and do remember subscribe to the channel or follow the page for regular notifications on every new video.